how to improve code quality in high volume process control products by finding the right split off between static and dynamic code analysis. We have to increase quality. We have to reduce our field core rate and our cost of non-quality because we have mass volume production. We do this throughout the complete life cycle of the project and we have all our projects process control. Remember, Randy also mentioned it. You have to make sure that the quality aspect is within your process. If it's not in, you have a problem. Now, we have coding conventions. We call it conventions because we explicitly split the coding standard with the styling guide. But Andy mentioned it. If he talks to certain people, they are talking about tops. They are talking about spaces. They are talking about naming, the, um, I mean, naming uh, functions. Yeah. We have coding standard, and these things can be checked using a static code analysis tool. And we also have a styling guide, spaces and, and uh, etc. Um, we have a local software development model for additional control. Currently, we're using QAC version 7.2. We have not switched over yet to the latest version, but this is planned very shortly. Why? Because it takes time, because we have to investigate what the consequence is. We cannot all of a sudden create many more warnings that people cannot cope with, because are there managers here? One. <laughs> they like traffic controls. <laughs> they like traffic lights. Their favorite colors are red. Well, not red. Orange, not uh, green. They want green. And all these things we do are translated into things they understand. Eh? They understand the colors. Eh? Sorry to be, I, I don't want to be blunt, <laughs> but it's just a way of translating that uh, you, you have to make a, a nice translation from, from the bottom, let's say, to the top, so that they can take the, the wrong, uh, sorry, the good uh, decisions. <laughs> that, that, that was a mistake. Projects should be able to drive the resolving schedule. Huh? For each problem we detect, for each QAC problem or static code analysis problem we have, we even submit a real problem report, which is of the same level as, for instance, teletext is not working. Same level, but of course we cannot do this for every warning, otherwise we would have, I don't have a problem saying this, tons of PRs, of problem reports. We have our own subset that we think is needed to make sure that we have at 0.7. It's integrated in our development process and during the night all our projects are built, all of them, all branches. Static code analysis tool is run every night on all the branches. And if needed, problem reports are entered. Problem reports that have to be solved by the developer. There is a weekly reporting to the project and team leaders with the traffic lights. Eh? And quality factors are taken up in progress reports. We already have QAC on board for many, many, many years. The GUI have now been increased with respect to quality a lot, but we had our tools already at that time and we started developing our own tools. We do not follow MISRA neither. Could be very astonishing, but we don't. Why? It will take us too much time to go from what we have now to MISRA. And we are convinced, and if I speak to other people, they follow us, we are convinced that it is not needed. But if you start anew, if you would like to have a classification, it's better to start with MISRA now. But we already have our, um, our classification ourselves. Then with respect to styling, I think everybody knows this, uh, this line. Eh? Everybody can read this, I hope. Well, if you reach the last word, you will be able to read it. Because why we get accustomed to what we see. Eh? It's, it's kind of a styling. The new bees that come into our company don't understand this. It takes some time. It's better to define your own styling. And everybody should be aware that they have to use the same styling. Why? Because then your neighbor will be able to read your code. If you don't use the same styling, he will also be able to read your code, but it will take much time, more time. All code can be read or understood. We have our naming conventions. We use a prefix for global variables, for instance, to distinguish them from the local ones. 
We use a code beautifier to rearrange our code. Yes, a tool is rewriting our code. And then we test it. And then we check it in. And the tool we are currently using is Encrustify because you can tweak it to your specification uh, very nicely. How do we manage the complexity? Well, we have our own categories. We have blocking, crashing, defect prevention. Blocking means QAC cannot do its analysis. It's a compiler error. Crashing means if you have this warning, then um, definitely your TV will crash in the field. So we cannot have this. Null pointer dereferencing, uh, typically. Although on a Trimedia that's not a problem, but on most uh, architectures it is. Defect prevention, that is, yeah, we should do this or we could have a problem. We try to prevent defects. But then on the other hand, we have major, minors, unsolvables. Yeah, the unsolvables, why? Because Koala. Koala is generating code. Koala is generating kinds of things that, that yeah, QAC doesn't like, but we know that it's, that's okay. Even if you use a macro or if you use a function prototype, etc., it's okay. We know it's okay. Apparent, yeah, that's a difficult one, but for pro programming research, it's a difficult one as well because it's so difficult sometimes to decide whether it's real a problem, yes or no. And then there are even things that we say, hmm, needs some more analysis. M needs more analysis from an architect, but then a real one. <coughs> um, blocking, QAC processing fails or is unreliable, I already mentioned it. We have a quality factor which we express relative to the number of files. It's the only one that is referenced to the number of files. All the rest is referenced to the number of lines. Of course you can say, hey, if you have a blocking, a compiler error, QAC cannot continue, what's the use? Well, at the, at, at the start of a project, you might have such files. <coughs> so therefore, the very first milestone, you should have zero of these blockings. Um, defect prevention, here it's mentioned more properly, error prone when code is changed. So these have to be solved as well. Um, then we have major, this is related to portability, minor related to styling, and then uh, yeah, the rest I will not go uh, into, into detail. This is our process. You'll see that you have this oops, specification at the top. Then we create or update components. Then we remove compiler warnings and linker warnings. We do a code review and we eventually might update some involved documents. Yeah, and this is in, a, in another uh, flow. And then you see at the right hand side, QAC output is mandatory for a code review. So Randy didn't lie, eh? we do it. <laughs> And then there is AR and RR. AR is an absolute review, RR is a relative review. If you have only a small change, we ask a colleague who knows about the code, who knows about the functionality, please have a look at it. And if he says it's okay, it's mentioned in, in the notes when we do a check-in, and then people can see, hey, this guy's reviewed it. If it's a big change, we need much more time. We have a peer review or we have a paper review, and then we sit together with quite some people that could be three, four, five, six, seven, ten. Depends on the on what code it is. And then we do a full review. Yeah. Um, the reporting we do ourselves. It's web based. We 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 yeah. It's not readable, Randy. I know, but you can also come and sit here. It's much more readable then. <laughs> um, it's it's just an overview. It's web based, and you can see or you can't see at the left hand side. There are different databases with the branch with the application that is run and then with the timestamp. And if you go more into detail, you see here that I have an overview per file, per number, and per file with blocking crashings and blocking crashings and defect preventions. And if we go more into detail, you even see here per package because we have our complete system decomposed into packages and subsystems. You see the blockings, crashings, even with the quality factor next to it. And you just click on the line and you can immediately see what is going on. We don't use the GUI. Why? I already mentioned it. Huh? And there's another drawback, but I will not mention it. <laughs> the GUI. Um, 
How do we do this? Even uh, there are other things we uh, we try to incorporate, and that's for more dynamic code uh, analysis. We are using asserts and also defect, uh, defensive programming, and it depends. If you do a malloc for teletext, yeah, and there's not enough memory, then you have to decide what you're going to do. Are you going to restart? Are you going to put some message <laughs> to the to the customer? It depends. Sometimes we are. Uh, causing an assert, um, even fatal error, um, or for, for other aspects, for we, we, we try to solve it, we try to capture it while the code is running. So it depends, but that's more to dynamic code analysis. All generated code includes mechanisms for exception logging for fatal errors in a file on flash. So if something happens, there's a detailed report on the call stack and all these extra parameters onto, the, onto a file in, in, in flash. And afterwards, you can read out the file with the USB stick, you take it along, and then you can have it translated to the source code. And then you can, in fact, have a complete uh, stack dump with lines, with code to easily detect uh, the problem. Um, there's even backtracing, so everything is, is, is in place. Even for uh, budgeting with uh, CPU load or, or uh, memory, um, it's all in place. For the moment, we have two processors running in our television, and each of them have lots of applications, lots of threads, so it's a uh, it's real uh, interesting insight if you're a bit. Huh? That's it.